Alhamdulillah, salatu wa salam ala Rasulullah. You feel this is better than that salam? Do you feel that? Someone's first step. Khair, inshaAllah. In these blessed ayat, we are reading, subhanAllah, so many lessons. But when I, I was reviewing, uh, one idea came to my mind that I would like to remind myself and you, inshaAllah, of. And Sayyidina Musa alayhi salam, he left the city. Allah tells us, subhanahu wa ta'ala, فَخَرَجَ مِنْهَا خَرَائِفًا يَتَعَقَّبُ He left after he pushed that uh, Egyptian, he pushed him, and that person died by mistake, right? فَوَكَزَهُ مُوسَى Sayyidina Musa alayhi salam, he just poked him. He didn't like punch him, or he just poked him, and he died. فَقَضَى عَلَيْهِ فَوَكَزَهُ مُوسَى فَقَضَى عَلَيْهِ the Prophet they are strong. And Allah willed that that man dies because of that push from Sayyidina Musa. And Sayyidina Musa, he was defending the other person who he thought he was like wronged or oppressed. And then Sayyidina Musa, he had to leave the, the city, right? But Allah tells us, He left it while he's afraid and he was like, Watchful. He said, so he left. Means he took precautions. He did what he has to do. He ran away and he was watchful. And what did he do else? He made dua. Oh Allah, protect me from the unjust ones. The ayah right after that. وَلَمَّا تَوَجَّهَتِ الْقَاءَ مَدْيَنَا قَالَ مَالَ قَالَ عَسَى رَبِّي أَنْ يَهْدِيَنِي سَوَاءَ السَّبِيلِ Same thing. Now after he left the city, where did he go? There must have been like a type of plan or direction. So Allah is telling us subhanahu wa ta'ala وَلَمَّا تَوَجَّهَتِ الْقَاءَ مَدْيَنَا He went or directed himself towards where? Madian. The city of Sayyidina Shu'aib, right? So he directed himself towards Sayyidina Madian's city or town. Qala again, dua. Qala asa rabbi an yahdiyani sawa as-sabi. He said, my, may, may my Lord guide me to the right, to the right path. And we notice, subhanAllah, subhanAllah, with every like movement from Sayyidina Musa alayhi salam. First time I noticed this, that dua, dua, dua. When he helped the two girls, he went to the shade. فَقَالَ رَبِّ إِنِّي لِمَا أَنزَلْتَ إِلَيَّ مِنْ خَيْرٍ فَقِيرٍ In every movement you see, he's doing something. He's doing something and making dua. And go read those ayat and you will notice that, that special thing that I noticed, subhanAllah, today that I didn't pay attention to before. And the, the, the lesson is very clear, brothers and sisters. And also in those ayat we have what? Depend on Allah. Put your trust in Allah. Surely you are on the manifest truth. Right? As that, that person came to the Prophet ﷺ and he told him, Ya Rasulullah, shall I keep my camel and put my trust in Allah, keep it untied outside and put my trust in Allah? What did he say? His word ﷺ became like a proverb. Huh? Became like a proverb in Arabic. We say, اعقل <coughs> وتوكل. Tie it and put your trust in Allah. And now the lesson we take from this in our time. In this most challenging time for us as Muslims in regard with our uh, holy sites, with our first Qibla, with our Aqsa, with our Quds, with our Jerusalem, with our Palestine, with our third holiest site as Muslims, we have to do both again. It doesn't make any sense that a Muslim says, okay, just let's make dua, just, just make dua, brother, just make dua. That is ridiculous. That is absolutely ridiculous. And it is a transgression in dua. 
It's a transgression in dua. <coughs> For example, if you have an exam and you tell your child, okay, my son, just make dua, my son, make dua. So is, is this what you're going to tell him? You never tell him this, right? You're going to tell him to study and make dua. And if we Muslims want this massacre and this genocide to stop, subhanAllah, something horrible. I cannot believe how this hypocrite world, especially the U.S., how they're behaving this way. How they are cutting the aid of the, the United Nations organization that are supplying aid to the Palestinians just because the Zionists, they made a lie. And we have seen how many lies have been exposed by them or fr from their mouths. We have seen how their lies over the, the, the past days and over centuries we know their lies, right? And yet the U.S. they cut the, the funding for the UNRWA and the trucks, thousands of thousands of trucks and they're at the crossing and they're not letting, come, uh, they're not letting them in. This is because of the weakness of the Arabs and the Muslims. If we were strong, they will never reach that. They will, we, would, we would have not reached that level. So we have to act and put our trust in Allah. How do we act? It's not an easy process. You know, it's very clear how this Zionist lobby, this, and this is not politics, huh? This is not politics, this is Islam. This is the true Islam. Any sheikh or khatib who come in these khutab and these Friday speeches, Ignore this genocide that's going on. He's betraying Islam and Muslims. I'm saying it very clear and loud. Any khatib. This must be mentioned in every single talk and khutbah and, and course and everything. Because what's going on is unprecedented. More than 32,000 Palestinians. Most of which are children and women. The shilling, the killing, the, and all, all now recorded by videos. Right? Stopping the Palestinians from our Aqsa Mosque, allowing those Zionist extremist Jews to go and desecrate our Aqsa Mosque. All these uh, violations of human rights and of uh, humanity values, it's going unpunished. And no one is stopping those terrorist Zionists. So we have to act. This Zionist lobby did not reach this level in a few days. They had a plan, they worked, they had uh, uh, strength, they had power, they had money. And that's why you see those Congress people, they're, dare, they're not daring to, to say no to the demands of the Zionists, right? They're, dare, they're not daring. Only 22 Congress people, how many Congress people are there? 400 total? Uh, almost 400, right? Only 22 who were courageous enough to to oppose this uh, uh, resolution in which they fund the Zionists with more money, like $4 billion, and they cut the funding for the United Nations Organization of the Palestinian Refugees, the, the UNRWA. So uh, we have to act, brothers and sisters, practical steps. We have a, a paper that has a QR code on the board there for the registration to vote. It is mandatory, I'm telling you, as a Muslim, it's mandatory on you to vote. You have to vote as a Muslim. We Muslims have to vote. And we have to act, and we have to protest, and we have to participate in every legal possible ways to defend our rights and the rights of our brothers and sisters. That's the summary. Along with this, before this and with this and after this, our dependence and reliance is on Allah Ta'ala. We make dua. That is the nice good dua that, it, well, that will be accepted inshallah. But to just sit and make dua, that's a transgression of dua. May Allah Subh'anaHu Wa Ta'ala make us of those who use the speech and follow the steps of Allah.